Status quo on the markets on the weakish side at this point, but of course, uh, in terms of uh, the telecoms uh, sector, take a look at Vodafone Idea. Also, take a look at Vedanta. Supreme Court, okay, Supreme Court to pass an interim order at 2 p.m. today, and this is must be with regards to the Tuticorin facility of the company on restarting it. So, it is inclined to restart Vedanta's copper plant, which is in Tuticorin. The stock has uh, uh, marginally improved on the back of this particular information. This is an important development coming in for Vedanta. So keep an eye out on Vedanta as well as take a look at Vodafone Idea as a stock which is starting to rise even if the rest of the telecom sector is looking weakish uh, at this point today. So uh, uh, inching towards about half a percent gain there. But take a look at Ultratech Cement also, and that reports its Q3 numbers in just a short while from now. And Nigel D'Souza is right here to tell us what to expect from this Aditya uh, Birla Group company. But first, uh, Nigel, since we have you with us, um, can you talk more about Vedanta and how will this particular bit of news, how impactful is it for the company and how much of a big uh, good news is coming in for the company? Well, if it's good news and if it comes about, then it will be good news. So remember, in the past, we have seen uh, that lower courts have said that they can go ahead and... Uh, you know, reopen this uh, Tutikoran smelter. It has 400,000 approximately in terms of capacity. So if it happens, it's good, but the state government as well is putting up a fight. At 2 p.m., as you said, uh, yes, we'll have to hear out on this front. Just to give you basic details, if in fact it does come to the fore, it can account for nearly around 15 rupees approximately of, uh, you know, of, uh, 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 of uh, the Vidanta current stock. So 15 rupees is approximately the number that the street is working with. In terms of analyst estimates, they were not uh, estimating that it will open out in FY19 itself. So if it is able uh, to open up, then it'll be very, very good news. The management had told us that it'll take at least 45 days for it to reopen. So even if, in fact, they get a favorable uh, verdict, then we, we are expecting sometime by March, mid of March, or maybe towards the end of March, that this smelter will uh, open up. We'll wait by at 2 p.m. Short numbers you're working with, approximately 15 rupees is, uh, you know, is the gain that uh, uh, Vidanta can get. So that's about Vidanta. We'll keep it aside. We'll tune back to it in the next half hour odd. But within the next one hour, I guess Altitex Cement will come out with the serve numbers. Now, in terms of expectations, on the top line, we're working with a number of around 14.5% in terms of growth. Bulk of that will come in because of sales volume. So the sales volume growth should be at around 10.5% or thereabouts. 17.5 million tons is the number that we're working with. The remainder comes in from higher realizations. Why do volume jump up by such a large extent? One is the acquired JP assets. Uh, they have started ramping up, so capacity utilization levels are higher out there. The second factor is a couple of grinding units have been commissioned in the last one year, and that's what helps them to deliver strong volume growth. Now, if you're moving to the operating profit out there, it should come in higher by around 13%. So you have your top line growing by 14.5%, but operating profit growing by around 13%, telling you there'll be some bit of margin compression. So 30 to 40 basis points approximately is uh, the margin of compression that we're working with. Input costs are likely to go higher because diesel on a year-on-year -year basis was higher if you're comparing quarter three with the previous quarter three. And also pet coke prices have moved higher. So that's something that will hurt them. In addition to that, I told you JP assets, they contribute to the top line. But in terms of cost of production, out there, in fact, JP's acquired assets, their cost of production is nearly around 100, 130 rupees, at least at the end of second quarter, if you're comparing it with Altatex Cement's standalone business. So those are the factors that contribute to some part of margin compression. We'll also watch by for the trade segment, because that's the one that gives the profitability to business. So any kind of movement there from around that 65% in terms of sales, that's what moves the margins. Finally, net profit should come in higher by around 11%. Next one, hour, hopefully we get the numbers. Back to you all. Okay, thanks a lot for that. We'll keep uh, an eye out on the numbers and we'll come back to you for more. For now in the market, just don't lose sight of what's happening with Interglobe Aviation. That stock is now up over 6% and big volumes getting traded over there. A couple of the realty stocks as well, Obera Realty, Goldrich Properties, doing very well at the moment. But let's hear out, as promised, excerpts of our conversation with some of the top corporate voices at the World Economic Forum that is underway in Davos. We need to get credit flowing again. We need to get banks to start to lend. Mm. Uh, we need to stop making uh, business uh, failure a crime. Mm. I think that's really important uh, that, uh, uh, you know, uh, on one hand, uh, we want our country to be entrepreneurial. Like we want uh, our young people to take risks. Mm. And then uh, when they take risks and fail, uh, mm. we should not uh, start to uh, say that, uh, okay, now this is some, something that you've done that will live with you for the rest of your life. Mm. You know, you, we put them on all, all sorts of lists uh, uh, and, and 
and uh, you know ensure that they nev- they can never borrow money again or never do business in my view those wrong doings are are a very minuscule percentage of of the total pool and uh, in punishing those those uh, those uh, few and far in between uh, people who indulged in wrong wrong doing mm. you cannot punish the whole system and uh, i think it goes against the very ethos of this prime minister and this uh, government mm. uh, who 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 has been so encouraging of uh, startups mm. and we we call this program startup india you cannot have a startup india and then say okay if you fail well first of all africa has already raised pre ipo money mm-hmm. 1.25 billion dollars which has gone to deleverage the 5 billion dollar debt we are in africa down to 3.7 billion out of which 700 million is flo for towers which is not a real debt to be repaid but just to be adjusted over time so 3 billion dollar debt there uh, at some point in time 2019 we will have our ipo this is not the time to claim that you better your market share this is the time to say we will hold on to our market share seven quarters eight quarters we have held on to a 30% plus share a lot of people have lost including voda idea have lost from where they were when they announced so i think we are holding pretty well we track technology closely i personally participate in Uh, the technology development as the chairman of GSMA, I've seen the development. Right now, uh, the mobile use case is still being developed. Mm. 5G is a technology which is looking for uh, services. It's not the other way around. Nobody is coming and telling us, "I want this, so give me 5G." Mm. So let's see what Verizon and AT&T and KT and SKT and SoftBank find on the other side of use cases. Mm. Uh, India still needs to give bra- mobile broadband in the hands of more and more people. Mm. and there is really nothing available in the marketplace of services which cannot be fulfilled in 4G mm. comfortably and in a very satisfying manner 33% of wipro's business now is digital we have been recognized as a top 5 digital brand mm. across the it services industry by itm sma uh, we've done very well on cloud uh, cloud business is now over a billion dollars mm. um, the investments that we've made in localization has paid us quite well where in the us we are over 60% local in most of the other markets uh, we are uh, about two thirds local mm. that we deliver so access to talent our ability to hire our ability to build cadre has been good which helps us uh, fulfill customer requirements quite well our mm. customer satisfaction is at an all time high every auto business every mobility business in the world is looking at scale we have scale because if you look at the auto and farm businesses the things they share at the back end mm. or the things they share in human resources and procurement in r&d in co-location those kinds of synergies you don't give up easily mm. other people are scrounging to find them mm. so yes there could be a big a bit of a pop if you say i'm going to separate this in order to get a higher pe we are players for the long term mm. we're not here to please the markets for a for a very short term pop up mm. if we see value in long term synergy All right, uh, Jyoti Labs is the numbers uh, that is flashing on your screens right now, and the stock has seen a fair bit of volatility in a very short time after the results came out. Trying to adjust to the numbers, slightly lower than expected on in terms of operational performance, in terms of the margins as well as uh, revenue, but uh, fairly in line at the moment. So that stock is almost two percent down in trade and has reacted to the numbers. All right, let's take it straight to some uh, news development as well, and uh, Prime Minister. led selection committee will meet today at 6 pm to appoint the new cbi director in the country and parikshit lutra is joining us with the list of possible contenders for this post tell us parikshit well uh, this is a very crucial meeting and probably by uh, 8 pm we would know who the new cbi director is remember the tenure of the last cbi director was highly controversial there was a fight going on between the two senior most officers so the government would try and restore credibility of the office of the cbi director to some extent we are uh, we are hearing that the officers from the 1983 to the 1986 batch four batches of the ips are being looked at the government has tried to make this uh, exercise as broad based as possible to make sure that uh, everyone feels that a large number of ips officers have been scanned their records uh, have been studied before coming to any decision before shortlisting uh, any candidates so 30 to 40 names have been studied that's what we've been told and a list of 12 candidates has been prepared this will of course be vetted by the central vigilance 
Vigilance Commission as well because their reports will be very, very crucial. Uh, what's important that all these officers should have clean records, seniority, tenure in CBI and experience in handling corruption cases and criminal cases. It's very important to have some sort of uh, experience in vigilance cases. Very uh, quickly, if I can go through it, Reena Mitra, she's supposed to be one of the front runners. Rajesh Ranjan, 1984 batch, Bihar Kader IPS officer. YC Modi, 1984 batch, currently serving in the NIA as DG. Rajnikanth Mishra, a 1984 batch, UP Kader IPS officer. Shivanan Jha, who's the DGP of Gujarat. OP Singh, Javed Ahmed as well. Let's see what happens at the end of the day, but a very important meeting, all eyes on that. Okay, well, thanks a lot for that. Uh, by the way, NIIT's Q3 numbers have come out and the uh, stock is under quite a bit of pressure. The profits have fallen by 1.5% right now, uh, coming in at just over 19-odd crores. Revenue growth also are hardly anything. It's, I think, single-digit growth. Yeah, 8% growth is what they've seen on the revenues and EBITDA growth has also been quite subpar. We need to get a little more details on what the breakup is on the revenue verticals, the corporate learning, skills and career, etc. But for now, number is not looking good for uh, NIT Limited. So, Sonia, uh, as far as the stock is concerned, it may be down 5% on the back of lower than expected results. But if you really take a look at the one month chart of NIT Limited, that has really zoomed up. And take a look at that because of NIT Tech, which is uh, a part uh, in which it holds over 20% stake and that is up for sale. So, because of that, the stock has really gone up. So, a little bit of shed is what we are seeing at this point because of the results. With that, we've come to the end of Business Lunch.